Hey everyone, this video is going to be all about collecting student data. Now maybe you're thinking to yourself, ugh, where do I even start? It can seem overwhelming when you start talking about all the data that's out there. So my suggestion is to first decide what type of data you want to collect. What's going to be most beneficial to you and your students? Is it collecting formative assessment data? Maybe summative assessment data. Maybe you have a few essential standards you want to collect data over. Or maybe you use I can statements or have specific skills you want to collect data on. Once you know what type of data you want to collect, then think about how often you want to collect that data. If you want to just dip your toes in, maybe start by collecting data for one summative assessment per unit, like your unit tests. Or if you want to wade in a little bit more, maybe you collect data for one or more formative assessments per unit. As you collect that formative assessment data, you're going to be able to use that information to help form your instruction throughout the unit, making your students better prepared for the content you want them to master. Or maybe you're one of those jump on in. So go ahead and think about tracking data for one or more specific essential standards, I can statements, or specific skills, and chart that data throughout a unit. Or if you are like me, you just jump on that diving board and dive right on in, then you're going to track data for one or more standards or skills throughout an entire quarter so that you can monitor student progress throughout all of your units inside of that quarter or maybe even semester, or even year. All right, so once you know what kind of data you want to collect and how often you want to collect it, then start thinking about what programs do you already use that can help you with this data. For those of you using quizzes in the classroom, you can look at the data through the reports. So once students have completed a quizzes activity, you can click reports and you'll see all of your quiz games listed here. Okay, and if you have multiple, you'll have arrows and numbers down at the bottom to go to different pages. So to look at the report, just click on the name of a quiz. Up at the top, you're going to get an accuracy, so an overall class average, how many questions were on the quiz, as well as how many students took your quiz. You can look at the quiz by individual student. It'll tell you their name and how many um, they scored correctly, so their percentage here. If you want to look deeper at a student, you can click on their name and it will pull up the quiz by question, so you can see exactly which questions the student missed. You can also look at the questions themselves. And so for question one, how many students got it right compared to who got it wrong, question two, etc. This is a nice uh, feature to pull up after you've played the game with your class as a way to debrief with students. You could go through and find any questions where a, a nice chunk of students have missed it. You can have a quick conversation or a quick reteaching moment. You can also overview which basically puts the students' names on the left, the questions up at the top, and then you'll see a green check mark if the student got it right, or a red X if the student um, was incorrect. So that's lots of different ways you can review data for your quizzes game. To find the student data in your Edpuzzle lessons, simply log into Edpuzzle, click on the three lines and then click on your class. Once your class is open, you're going to see all of the assignments that you have given to your students. To find the data for an assignment, simply click on one of the assignments and you have two tabs. You have a student tab and a questions tab. If you want to look at the data individually by student, be on this tab and then scroll down to find the student you want to check. So I'm going to click on this student, and when I do that, it's going to tell me their score, how much of the video they watched, um, the number of correct versus incorrect responses, and how much time they spent um, completing this lesson. But I can also scroll down and see every question they answered and whether or not they got it correct or incorrect. 
So this is great if I'm looking for data on an individual student. Um, maybe I want to check and see which students, um, like I'm pulling them up to work with them one-on-one -on -one and I want to see which concepts they need uh, individual help with. Probably the data though that you're really looking for is the question data. So what I can do here is look by question how many of my students got it uh, correct out of how many students submitted it. And if I see a number where a lot of my students miss this question, I could shine it up on the board and we could have a reteaching moment. Or I can click here and I can see exactly who answered what. So who gave me the wrong answer? these students who gave me the right answer, these students. So now if it's a particular concept I'm working with, by clicking on that I know exactly who to pull in for a small group um, session. For those of you playing Kahoot in the classroom, once you're done with your Kahoot game you can look at the reports. Just come here and click report and then scroll down until you find the report you want to look at. Go ahead and click on it. A dashboard will come up and just give you a brief overview. So we had 75% uh, correct with the class average, number of players, number of questions. So what I can do is look down here if there were any really difficult questions that came through. It's going to tell me the question and it's going to show me the really low uh, number of kids who got it correct. So only 6% of my students answered this correctly. And then there was a second one as well. So this was a difficult question and only 25% of my class answered it correctly. So that's kind of a nice little overview. Uh, just like a dashboard overview. It also tells me who didn't finish the quiz and who might need help with this quiz. So this student just scored really low. I can also go more in depth by clicking on my players. I'll see their names over here and their scores right here. If I want to look closer at any score, let's look at this one since they got a 78. It's going to tell me every question that was given to that student and whether they got it correct or incorrect. Probably the most helpful to you though is going to be the questions option. This is going to pull up every question in the game and then how the class did on that question. This would be a great thing to shine up on your board after the game is over and kind of debrief on some of these questions where a lot of students missed the answer. So you probably have a conversation about this one at 56%, probably this one at 25%. You can click see more. Here's another 56. Here's the 6% one that we saw uh, earlier on the dashboard. And that way you can just have a, a quick reteaching moment with your students. If you are using Google Forms in your classroom, you can find the data by opening the form and clicking Responses. Now there are three ways to view the data through a summary, question by question, or individual submission by individual submission. I think the one that you're going to find the most helpful is the summary. And if you scroll down, you're going to see each question along with kind of a graph showing you um, the breakdown. So this was a question, um, I had three options and you can see in this pie chart who answered what. And in this case we have a bar graph, who answered what. So these would be very helpful to do a quick reteaching after you've done some sort of a formative assessment. So you can quickly see where your students are and have that reteaching moment with them if it's needed. If you want to track data over time or you just want to look more in depth at the data, you can also send your form submission data to a Google spreadsheet where you can then organize and sort it however you would like to. With Plickers, you can also see the data. So inside your Plickers account, you would just click reports and choose the activity you want to look at. 
So the first option you have in your reports is just to see a quick dashboard or overview. So you can see the average class score. You can see the individual students and their scores. You can also see per question the average score for each question. Or you can dig deeper into each question, see the question, each answer choice, and then see how many students answered each option, showing you the correct answer and the incorrect answer. And right away you're going to see who might need some extra uh, reteaching or one-on-one -on -one instruction. There is a lot of data that you can get from Edulastic. So when you give students assessments or assignments in Edulastic, there are lots of different reports that you can get. Some of the reports are just for the premium version, but there are a few reports you can get on the free version as well. So this first one I want to show you is called the Live Class Board. So as you give an assessment to students to complete, you can view live the incoming um, answer submissions that students are completing as they work through an assignment. You can also come here after the fact, but as you work through here you have some different options. We have a card view, student view, and question view. So with the card view each student has a card and you can see how they're doing, you know, their performance, their overall score. I can click here to dive deeper into each one of their responses. But you can see here some color coding. Each question is showing up here. Green is correct. Yellow is partial credit. Red is incorrect. And I believe blue is they haven't answered it yet. Don't hold me to the blue, but I think that's what that one is. Anyway, I can scroll down here and look for certain students. Again, I can dig deeper by clicking on view responses and see how they are doing can also look at this graph up here to see as a class how are we doing on question one, question two, question three. And you can see, wow, a lot of students got partial credit on question three. That might be a, a quick reteaching moment with the whole class. Um, you can see several students um, got question 10 and question six wrong. So I might be pulling in a small group of those students who missed it to review a specific concept or skill or to see if they have any questions for me. And it looks like most of the class here is blue, and if I'm remembering correctly, that just means they haven't answered that one yet. Again, don't hold me to blue, though. All right, so we can also look by students, and we can go through the data by individual students. So here is our student yellow car, is the nickname they've been given um, for this video purpose, because I don't want student names out here. And I can go through this test for the student. I could also access it here by clicking view responses. So I can get to it a couple of different places. I can also look at the data by question. This one takes a little bit longer to load, but then once it's here, I can look at the trends of the data. Here are my students' initials, so I can kind of see question one, how did we fall? This is another great place to quickly come to. And I don't really have a lot of reds here. Let me go to question two. I have a little bit more reds, three. I can't quite remember. I know we talked about there was one that. Oops. Now I'm stuck, aren't I? Okay. There we go. Question. I think it was question six. There we go. So I could look at this and see these lovely initials and then I would know who to pull for a quick small group or a quick one-on-one um, -on -one with students. So this live class board is available both in the free and the paid versions. The other thing I can do is come over here to my insights. These are all different types of reports. And I'm not going to dig into them in this particular video. I just want you to know they are here. Most of these reports, though, are available with only the premium feature. But we have question analysis. We can create subgroups. Maybe we want to have um, different groups of our students. And then we can compare the performance on something based on the group. We can have assessment summaries. We can look and track by standards 
textbook and track by students. We can even compare. So maybe we had a pretest and a post test, and we want to, in one report, compare how students did on both. All of that uh, data can be found in these. And again, most of these, if not all, um, are a premium feature. With BrainPop, there are a couple of different reports you can access. The first one is you can go to your student scores, and if you want to see how an individual student did, you can go ahead and click on that score in order to see every question they answered and whether or not they got the answer correct or incorrect. And if multiple students answered the same quiz, then you can click on this icon to see a class summary. And this one will show you every question and how your class as a whole answered it. If you notice there is any questions where a large chunk or majority of students have missed that answer, you'll be able to spend some time um, talking about that concept and even doing some reteaching or pulling students up into a small group in order to address any misconceptions